E3 2018 has come and gone, and well, it was awesome. But uh, yes, granted, it wasn't as you know big as past years, but it really didn't need to be due to the fact that we're already nearing the end of this console generation. So it's understandable that you know things are kind of you know getting you know much more complacent, much more calm. Having said that, though, there's still an amazing assortment of games. I mean, new games, new announcements, uh, new gameplay of games we already knew about. It was just incredible. So, here's my top 10 list of the games that I'm most interested in, you know, my most anticipated, that came out this E3. Now, also at the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about, you know, what company, you know, because it's the conferences. What company won E3? And while there's not that many losers this year, there was definitely a winner. But regardless, let's get to it. Here's my top 10 games. Now, obviously this will be on here because I'm a huge Super Smash Bros. fan, but what I love about this game is the fact that every past character in all of the past games is now available in this one package, and I'm so excited to play as Wolf again, even though it's such a small character. I, I don't know why, I just love that the fact that I have complete and utter control of who I choose. I mean, the amount of choices is amazing, not to mention there's new characters. Well, so far they've only announced Ridley, and I'm pretty sure they'll announce new ones, but them announcing, like, palette swap characters, like, you know, Daisy was a little weird. I mean, she's already been there. I mean, you just had to change the... I mean, I guess they just added her voice in. You know, some attributes are similar to her actual her character, but regardless, it's still fun. I mean, Super Smash Bros. is amazing. I mean, they perfected it with the last one. Uh, Melee was obviously probably the perfect game, and just seeing all the old mechanics and new mechanics and everything just mixed all together into this one huge smorgasbord of just awesomeness is going to want to make me, you know, rebuy a Switch. And yes, I don't own a Switch right now, at least at the current time of this video. But with all these games coming out, yep, it's high time to get a new one. Now, while I'm not a huge, I'm, I'm a fan of the series, but I'm not, you know, huge into the lore of the actual series. I've just barely played it. I've nearly watched my cousin play it when I was a kid a lot. Now, it's funny because I own 1, 2, and 3 in the HD collection. Also, I own 4, and I even own DMC through the, you know, the PS Plus uh, free games. It's cool to see that we're getting a sequel to the original series. DMC came out, you know, tried to reboot the whole thing. And while it's not a bad game at all, don't believe people say that it's a shit game. It's not. It was misguided. So, seeing a, you know, a true sequel to the original series is just absolutely fantastic. The gameplay looked amazing, and everything about it just looks so cool. And just the reveal of Dante, you know, coming back, it's just... It's a nice screw you to anyone who said, I'm done with the Devil May Cry series. But it's also a great callback to everybody who's just been wanting this since day one. Or ever since Devil May Cry 4 dropped, it's like, I can't wait for 5 to come out. So, the fact that we're getting a true sequel is just awesome. This should be way higher. Only thing is, we didn't really see that much gameplay. Granted, I've read articles that talk about the gameplay. It's a first-person shooter game, which is kind of weird, but it's also, you know, I'm already used to it due to the fact that, you know, a lot of, a lot of RPGs that are uh, FPSs too. But in this case, I'm just more complacent. I'm, I'm, I'm hiding, I'm not, I'm not keeping my hype, you know, at an all-time high, I'm keeping it nice and low. You know, I'm just being realistic. I mean, I already love CD Projekt Red. I mean, The Witcher series is fantastic. It's just, I'm holding my, you know, my hype to a to a reasonable level. The, the, you know, the graphics look great, the world looks great, the trailer looks, you know, fantastic, it's sold me on it. It's just, the reason why it's not so much higher is because I haven't seen the full gameplay, and I need to see it in motion before I, you know, get super hyped. But for now, just for namesake alone, this was awesome to see. Now, speaking of namesake, um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Remedy, and the fact that we're getting a brand new project this soon after, well, their last attempt, which, which is a good game, don't get me wrong, it just wasn't that, you know, my cup of tea, but Max Payne, Alan Wake, I mean, they have such a great track record, and 
just the gameplay alone on this just sold me. It looks great, it looks intuitive, and it looks just so versatile and crazy. I mean, you do, it does seem like you're a little bit overpowered, but I can only imagine the kind of obstacles they throw at you. I mean, it looks fantastic, it looks great. And again, just because it says Remedy on the freaking bottom, I'm already sold. Yeah, um, this blew me away with just its, you know, announcement trailer last year, and this year we actually got to see gameplay, and holy crap, it seems like they mixed uh, Tenshu, uh, Bushido Blade in the sense of like combat, like you could actually kill people in like one hit, you know, like what an actual samurai sword would actually do to you if you got stabbed in the throat. The combat looks great, the world, the open world just looks beautiful. Everything about this is already shaping up to be possibly a game with your contender. And again, yeah, I'm already probably, you know, shooting for the, for the stars here. But last time I checked, I don't think I've ever seen a game this open world in this kind of setting. Like, you're running around with a samurai sword, you know, you're fighting for your honor, and it's just, it looks so incredible. And yeah, in a way, it could be seen as like, you know, something similar to like Zelda or, you know, The Witcher. But it's the setting, it's the style and the tone that really sells it for me. And the combat itself. That's one thing I had a problem with Witcher. I'm not a huge fan of the combat, but right here, this looks incredible. My god, uh, now this is probably people's number one, but for me it's number five because while I'm super excited to play this game, I already know what's going to happen. I mean, it's already a quality product. It's made by Naughty Dog. I mean, it's a freaking fantastic looking game. And it's already the first one just jammed up to 11 because it just looks... The gameplay looks incredible. The small little details they added to the game. Everything about it just looks incredible. But on top of that, the world. My god. The overall foliage, the freaking just this, the graphics. Everything about this just looks incredible. And the setting is just grimier than ever, and it's the, the, the lighting. The lighting isn't really sold it for me too, but above all else, just the details. The, the more real it feels, the more immersed I'm going to get. And for a non-VR game, this one already has my immersion sky high. Now this one's definitely a personal choice because Dying Light 2, I was a huge fan of Dead Island. Yes, the story sucked and the overall gameplay was a little, you know, meh, but the game worked. Dying Light had the gameplay perfected, story was decent, and, you know, the dialogue was still pretty hokey. And, you know, the character NPCs for the, uh, the humans was pretty bad. But now, with everything perfected, all the, you know, the, the, the story looks amazing, but the gameplay's already perfected, and the AI looks incredible. The whole world, they just... That's the, that's the best thing about this. The world is molded by your actions, so that already just gives the player so much more control, and it just looks so breathtaking how things can change and how just... I mean, just, just the gameplay looks incredible. I mean, just beating people's asses, and again, you're not only fighting just zombies anymore. The humans are an actual threat. Before, you'd run into a human, if you had a gun, you can just shoot them down, even though there were bullet sponges, or you could just run away from them. Here, it's much more, you gotta take control of, like, you know, areas. You gotta actually fight humans. You actually have to, you know, you know, team up with other humans. So, it's just a cool world-building kind of, like, style. Like, kind of gameplay. But, I love Dying Light 1. And the fact that Dying Light 2 is just shaping up to be even better, it's just awesome. Alright, from here on out, it's basically number ones for other people, because, yeah, at this point, it's just preference. But yeah, Death Stranding. Hideo Kojima's a genius, and you know, saying that shit, it's like, oh, you know, he's, he's like, you treat him like a god. Like, th the man has not made a bad game. The way he builds these worlds, the way he builds everything around them. Just this alone. We finally got to see full-fledged gameplay. It's just breathtaking. The story, 
I don't even understand it yet. And I, if you say you do, you're freaking lying. Uh, the the open world, uh, the graphics look incredible. The acting. I don't know what to say about this game other than it. Ju it's just breathtaking. It, it it makes people stop in their tracks and just go, "What the hell is that?" And it. I, I don't know what the hell to say about this game. I don't know what the hell it is. That that's the main thing. I don't know what the hell it is, and that's possibly a huge component of why I'm so hyped for it, because I don't know what the hell to expect, I don't know what the hell it is, I want to know what the hell it means, and overall, it, it's, it's legitimately an enigma, and that's what's so great about it, the mystery, and just the intrigue of wanting to find out what the hell is going on here, and how the hell do I get involved in it. Yeah, at this point, you can call me a fanboy all you want. I mean, I absolutely love Fallout. Granted, I'm not a huge fan of New Vegas due to some certain gameplay tweaks and also some characters, but, or enemies. But regardless, Fallout is something I just just really love. And seeing this brand new game come out so soon, and on top of that, having an online component is just incredible. I mean, the gameplay is all pretty much the same as Fallout 4, but just new mechanics, new a new setting, just the fact that we're now it's a prequel to all the past games, brand new creatures, uh, the vibrancy, the actual lush environments. I mean, the fact that the world's not 100% dead yet, it's just cool to see. And above all else, I mentioned before, but the online. Playing with your friends, or even better, fighting other people out in the real world is just something that Fallout's been needing for freaking years. And granted, we almost got that in the good old days, you know, with Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and there was supposed to be an online game right after that. But then Fallout 3 came out and changed the whole script completely. But, whatever. Better late than ever. Because the gameplay here looks incredible, the world looks incredible. Everything here... I just keep saying the word incredible, but this one had me just... My, my freaking mouth agape the whole damn time, because I was just like, holy shit. I'm so excited. I'm really, I'm super excited, I, to the point where I already got the power uh, armor edition. I mean, that helmet looks great, and the thing's already sold out, so I'm already happy that I got it, but it just looks awesome. Yes! Yep, like I said, preference. Pretty sure a lot of you out there agree with me because this is just a remake. It's just a legitimate ground up remake of Resident Evil 2, a game already played a ton of times. But it looks incredible. My final use of that damn word, because I know you're getting sick of it. I mean, this game just nails what Resident Evil has always been about horror, survival horror, and the fact that. I haven't seen this done in actually a Resident Evil game, like legitimately, but darkness. Darkness is used to its full potential, and my god, it is terrifying. And this is like Silent Hill 2 levels darkness, I mean this is just pitch black dark. You need that flashlight to survive, otherwise you're gonna be walking in a wall and you don't even know it. On top of that, I love the fact that you know they're rearranging the game, uh, everything is, you know, the overall setting is pretty much similar. but. You know, things are rearranged, there's new puzzles, and the fact that we get to see Leon Kennedy again as a rookie cop. Darkside Chronicles obviously missed the memo, they hire like a 35 year old actor to voice him. He's supposed to be in his 20s, he's a brand new police officer, or his, or, or his late teens, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, I'll put the age there, but regardless, he's supposed to be a kid, thrown into this horrible situation, and I definitely got that vibe from this. I mean. Just the overall savagery of all the freaking zombies. Every single zombie felt like a damn threat. Like they used to be. I mean... It's freaking scary. And I just saw gameplay. I cannot wait to play this game in a pitch black room with freaking headphones on and just nothing but the TV screen on. <sighs> and yes, again, I'll reiterate. It's a remake. I've played this game before. Nothing new. There's no, you know, new aspects that are gonna blow me away. I do love the fact that they're, you know, adding in uh, the, the uh, fourth survivor mode, like the hunk mode. You can hear hunk in the trailer. Um, 
he's talking about you know extraction so i just love the fact that all the all the elements will be implemented here in you know the new gameplay style but overall it's just yeah at this point it's just fanboyism i don't really care and i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one Well, that's the list. And, yeah, this is just preferences, obviously, in my part, but the amount of games they announced, all the, you know, the new gameplay, it was just incredible. I mean, here's an honorable mentions list. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Sekido Shadows Die Twice, Jump Force, Rage 2, Wolfenstein Youngblood, Gears Tactics, Damon X Machina, Super Mario, Super Mario Party, the new Fire Emblem game. I mean, holy crap. Games are still being thrown at us at freaking Mach 1, and it is just so cool to see that... And... This kind of leads me to my next topic, but it's just so cool to see that the, all the consoles are flourishing. All of them. Now let's get to my main point that I wanted to talk about earlier, but let's talk about it now. Who won E3? Now, I did say earlier there really wasn't that many losers. I mean, at least I hinted at it. But uh, yeah, EA, they, they stick with their stupid bullshit money grubbing, like all we care about is your money. This is, EA sucks a big one, they, they freaking lost. Uh, Ubisoft, step your game up. Good for you. Uh, Nintendo Direct was fantastic. Uh, Square Enix, uh, Bethesda was, was fun. But, uh, yeah. The usual contender, the usual winner, would either be Bethesda or PlayStation. Bethesda did a great job. And they're definitely second place. First place, though, definitely goes for Xbox. Yes. Xbox, you freaking did it. It was amazing. Your whole freaking conference was was spine tingling all the announcements everything about it was just incredible from the beginning announcing halo infinite to the end pretty much just dropping cyberpunk 2077 the whole conference was fantastic xbox wins and god damn it it's about damn time because yeah i'm interested now granted due to what they said i don't know if i'm going to be buying an xbox one per se but they are working on the next console and as long as it's backwards compatible all the games that were announced, if I don't get them on PC, I'm probably going to pick them up. Because with consoles, I'm not a fanboy. I pick and choose whichever one is the best of the current generation. That's why I own a 360 and a PS3. And a Wii, apparently. Yeah, it's right there. But, uh, yeah, it's just... you got to pick your battles, and my god, Xbox is finally putting up a fight, and right here is where it really showed. But, um, yeah. Speaking of uh, battles, Sony was weird. Sony's PlayStation conference was good in the sense that, you know, they showed a lot of great games, a lot of, you know, great products, but they didn't really, it, it seemed like they weren't trying in the sense that, you know, they were being kind of cocky-ish. It's like, eh, we already own the whole market share. It's like, you know, here's the games. I mean, that's the vibe they put out, but at the same time, the games they showed were just incredible. I mean, freaking Resident Evil 2 was a showstopper for me, but yeah, Xbox wins, no doubt about it. But again, like I always say, the winner here, though, mainly... Is the gamers whether you own a damn switch because nintendo direct was great uh, nintendo direct was great uh playstation or a freaking xbox the games are coming and even though we're nearing the end of this console generation it's still cool to see that well whether we get these games down the line or now our pockets and wallets will be empty not because of money grubbing bullshit by ea but because there is a lot of incredible games and incredible titles that actually interest us and, well, want us to buy them. That's pretty much all E3 is about. Show the product, get the people hyped, give us a release date, and we'll go buy it if we're interested. And damn it, this year went off without a hitch. Regardless, that's the video. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. <sighs> I'll see you guys later. And I'm going away